Good afternoon class and welcome to a brief introduction on resistive circuits. Essentially we'll be covering from our text uh, electrical engineering principles and applications. The goal today is to solve resistive circuits methodically so that it's reproducible and you can do so um, without having to kind of think through a lot of the fundamentals. If you can remember these steps then you'll be able to solve most circuits. And we do so with an independent voltage source simply meaning that the voltage source is fixed. Uh, has a fixed voltage uh, independent of what the rest of the circuit looks like. And the value in today's lesson is that this is a very foundational subject for uh, electrical engineering and circuitry in general, um, in that you, all of the circuit elements will kind of build on the knowledge presented here. Um, and then resistance series and parallel are also used analogously in mechanical and fluid systems. Um, and you'll see this probably later in a dynamic sy systems and controls course. Um, but you'll want these ideas deeply ingrained so you can also use them uh, not just here um, in electronic applications but elsewhere as well. And then finally, circuit knowledge is really needed to do scientific research and engineering in general. Even if you're not working with these things directly, which a lot of you will be, um, you'll want to communicate with the people that are doing so. Um, so just a quick overview and then we'll head on to the lesson. We're going to review Ohm's Law and Kirchhoff's Laws really quickly. Then we're going to do some resistive circuit applications. And then finally, we're going to hit a real circuit check to see that if our examples um, are actually, what we solve in our examples are actually applicable um, to real life circuits. So to start off, let's do the quick review of Ohm's Law, which is simply the idea that in a resistive element, there's a proportionality between uh, voltage and current, and that proportionality constant is the resistance R or R, because V is in terms of volts, and SI units, I is in terms of amps. That means that R is in terms of volts per amp, or the same thing is the ohm unit. So we'll be consistent with that throughout today's lesson, and hopefully we'll have some practice doing so. Let's move on to Kirchhoff's Law. Hopefully you've seen Ohm's Law before, so it's not um, too unfamiliar to you, but the Kirchhoff's Laws may be, and this is kind of the fundamental building blocks behind which you solve these circuits. Let, let's start with the Kirchhoff's current law, which we'll abbreviate KCL. And this simply says that between conductive elements or nodes in a circuit, we will have uh, all of the currents will sum to zero. And the key word here is that into the node, they will sum to zero, so that we say I1, I2, I3 are our currents through these conductive pathways. We now see that because they're all pointing into it, I1 plus I2 plus I3 is the convention we've established. And if I swap the direction of one of these, such as I2, I also swap the sign as well. So we'll keep that convention throughout today's practice. And then there's also Kirchhoff's voltage law. law, which is fairly similar, but it simply says that the voltage around a closed loop in a circuit, so let's put in two elements here, but around this closed loop, um, and these can be any elements, these can be resistors, these can be uh, power supplies, they can be whatever they need to be, um, they are, we'll go ahead and assign these conventions, V2, V1, such that around that closed loop, we'll go ahead and establish the convention that into an element into the negative side, so see the arrows twisting around this element and heading into the negative terminal of that first element with voltage V1. So we're going to give it a negative sign and then into the positive terminal of V2, such that as we would expect, let's pretend this is a, a voltage source and this is a resistive element, we now see as we would expect that the voltage across the resistive element is the same as across the power supply. So hopefully with these conventions and the quick overviews of the Kirchhoff's laws, we can solve some resistive circuit examples. And so we'll start with the series. This is also a good issue to cover. And we'll go ahead and for the sake of consistency, we're going to establish a really good drawing initially. And we're going to try to be very consistent in how we detail these pictures, or diagrams, I should say, such that we adhere to all the laws we've previously established in conventions. So, if we have a current going through here, and a current going through here, so we have resistor R1 with current I1 and voltage V1, same thing over here, V2, I2. 
and we're going to have a voltage source, but so we have practice with the units, I'm going to go ahead and give that a value of 12 volts. We're going to go ahead and practice with our laws. So we're going to start with a Kirchhoff's current law, and we're going to establish a node right here where we're doing this current law. So we have I1 going into it, I2 going out of it. So we have I2 minus I1 by our law. And as we would expect, two elements in parallel have the same current. And by the voltage law, we're going to go around in a loop like so. And we're going to say that since we're entering the negative side of the 12 volts, we'll say minus 12 volts plus, uh, uh, sorry, plus V1 plus V2 equals zero. And therefore, we would have 12 volts is equal to V1 plus V2. And now to completely solve for this V1 and V2, we need to use Ohm's law. So V1 is equal to I1 R1 and V2 is equal to I2 R2. So we can go ahead and do I1 R1 plus I2 R2. And since I1 I and R, I2 excuse me, are the same, we'll just call it I1 together. We get that this is R1 plus R2. And let's go ahead and prescribe values just so we have practice with this. So we'll call this 1000 ohms. We'll call this 2000 ohms. And so with this new knowledge in mind, we can go ahead and say that I1 is equal to R1, which is 1000, R2, which is 2000. So 12 volts divided by 3000 is what that would add to is actually, we'll go ahead and call it, go ahead and keep it in the same units, 0.004 amps, I believe, which is the same as 4 milliamps. And so we'll go ahead and move on to this uh, parallel circuit. And I encourage you, if that practice example gave you help and you think you can maybe solve this one um, simply with these practical rules by yourself, then I encourage you to do so and pause the video. But for the sake of brevity, I'm going to go ahead and continue forward. And so we're going to say that for the parallel, let's establish the same thing such that now we can go ahead and start with the KVL through here which says that minus V1 is equal, or sorry, plus V2 is equal to zero. And as we would expect the parallel elements, their voltages are the same, so V1 is equal to V2. And then in another KVL, we see that these elements are also together. So we'll look at our source as well as our, um, as well as our first resistor. So we actually have minus 12 volts plus, notice how the sign flipped on the V1 this time because of the way that we're going around the circuit, equals zero. And therefore, as we would expect, V1 equals V2 equals 12 volts. So as you can see, based on the way I've mapped, all of these are in fact indeed in parallel. And if we wanted to solve for individual um, currents, then we could actually do we, we know directly um, what, uh, what um, both the current through these are because of Ohm's law. So if I have V1 over R1, I get I1. And I believe that comes out to be 0.012, if I'm not mistaken. And if I get V2 over R2, which is the same, 12 volts is equal to I2 divided by this 2000, I get 0 0.006, and then my final KCL, Kirchhoff's current law, through a node here, says that all of these flows coming in, so I have this one coming in, I have this one going to resistor 1, this one going to resistor 2, sorry this isn't extremely well drawn, but just so we can have a general idea, let's make it look a little prettier. I now know that these will in fact sum and I'll go ahead and do this quickly. And this says that the current through my source is equal to I1 plus I2. And therefore, it's going to be 0 0.018 ohms. Or, sorry, amperes, excuse me. So please give that one a look through again if you need to see it. But for the sake of brevity, um, we're going to move on to the last one. I do encourage you on this last one to pause it 
Um, this is a really good time to implement both of these ideas. And so we're going to keep the same values. 1,000 here, 2,000 here, same conventions. Remember these are important, especially when you're doing both the voltage and current laws. I believe they've been consistent throughout. And directions of the current as well. And we're going to have our 12 volt power source as well with the current coming out this way. And so finally, when we're going to solve this, we're going to start with a KVL through here. All that tells you is, as you've seen before, that the voltage through 1 is equal to the voltage 2. We'll call that KVL 1. Make that more apparent. And the second KVL is going to tell you through here that minus 12 volts going into our positive, going into our positive, and let's call this resistance 3 and let's make this 100 ohms for argument's sake. And that, that is going to be plus V1 plus V3 equals 0. Rewritten 12 volts equals V1 plus V3. And then finally, we're going to have to add one more step. This is kind of where it sometimes loses people. And that's, we're going to analyze this node. So we have a current. Remember the conventions we've established and adhered to. So we have a current heading into, uh, through R1. We have a current heading through R2. And we have a current heading through R3. But in respect to the node, 1 and 2 are heading into it. 3 is heading out of it. Therefore, we have I1 plus I2 is equal to I3. I went ahead and simplified. Please work it out if you need to. And then since we know the relationship between these elements based on Ohm's law, what we can now see is that V1 over R1, and just for simplicity's sake, let's just say solve for voltages. If we get the voltages, we simply divide by the resistances in our resistive elements, and we have everything we need to know. So that plus 2. V3 over R3. Well, remember our point up here. We can now implement this here, and we can also implement the fact that V1 is equal to V2. So let's go ahead and put everything in terms of V1. And so all this is going to say is that V3, V1 over R1 plus V1 over R2 is equal to 12 volts minus V1, rewritten, over R3. And now we can put this all back over and solve. I believe what you get out of this is that V1, according to my values of 1,000, 2,000, and 100, is equal to 10.43 volts. And V2 is equal to 1.57 would be, or sorry, not V2, V3. This would also be V2, according to our first condition. All right. Well, let's go ahead and check that really quickly. Hopefully, if you need to, please work through that problem. I tried to simplify some of the math to save a little bit of time. And so, class, we want to take a look at that exact example circuit that we looked at in that last problem. So I actually have it hooked up to a 12-volt power supply, as you'll see there where the positive terminal is on the plus 12 volts, the negative is on the ground terminal. And then if we actually look at the resistance nominally between these two, if I can get a good connection, looks like it's about 12.11. Yeah, hanging around 12 at the upper limit. And so if we actually look at the voltages across the each of the elements in our final design, our 1000 element, which is R1, and then on the left, is element R2, which is 2000, and at the bottom is element 3, which is resistance 3. I can actually end up with a value of 10.4, which is very close to that value of 10.43 that we calculated. And then if I look at our third resistive element, which is as such, we'll actually see that we get 1.57 if I can get a good connection. So we can see that that also spikes close to 1.57, which is what we calculated here. Just wanted to show the actual application of that final circuit.